Okay, we're back with the key building project for the old Rudol Rose, Rudol and Rose uh, low B flat flute. And I've had a little bit of a change of plans. Um, show you a little bit here what we're dealing with. These are just some rough sketches I did of the one of the keys top view, side view. And my intent all along was to be bold and forge these things out of one piece of silver. And that's not going to happen. Um, I'm going to end up doing these in pieces. I'm going to all of these sharp curves here. Uh, I'm going to have a those are going to be two sections and I'm going to brace them together with high silver content solder so you will never know that it was brazed and I'll be able to get that corner nice and crisp. So this is a piece that I tried to bend and it looks pretty good from a distance. You have fairly sharp angles there but these corners on both the outside and the inside on the actual keys uh, are very very sharp you know, they're, they're sharp corners um, these original keys were cast so I don't have keys to make castings and melt silver and make everything perfect with one go um, this is the one one key that came with the flute I need to make the three longer ones this, is, this would have been the easiest one to make um, but these were all cast. I can't duplicate that without these turning into major ordeals in the forging department. Um, I tried practicing stuff and even just that little bit of hammering was really taking a toll on my joints. Um, so it's it's not going to happen if I want to be able to continue fixing other people's instruments and not just do this, you know, once every six months while I recover. So I'm going to like this this piece will become three pieces, you know, a joint there and a joint there. So in order to do this, either way, you know, I have the curves here marked out that I've measured off of castings and the angles. Um, remember I have silicone molds that I filled with plaster so I got some pretty accurate approximations of uh, the radius on each of the curves. That's an interesting statement, accurate approximations. But anyway, for instance this one has a radius of half an inch, this one is five sixteenths, have a quarter inch up here. Uh, I'm going to have to have something with which to bend those radii. So I have a brass block here that I am filing the various radii. Um, this is a, what is that, 5 16th gauge. And that matches up that curve there that I filed by hand. Um, this one is the longest of the two that I did yesterday and this is for the top of the key. All of the keys have the same curvature on the top. Flip this over so you can see it. So all the keys are going to have this curvature here. Um, and hopefully, I'm going to have to refine that a little bit. It's a little bit rocky, but I can bend all of the keys to the same curvature to the same point and uh, then they will all come out pretty close, you know, within a, a few thousandths and then I can file the rest to, to shape. But on my master design sheet here, fortunately they're all pretty much the same. We've got mostly 5 sixteenths radii, there's a one half, there's a one quarter, and this big one 
here. I measured it one inch, but I don't think that's right. It's a lot bigger than one inch. Um, it's a lot more gradual than one inch. But I have the big one, whatever that's going to be, in the 5 sixteenths. So I just need to do the half and the quarter. And I'm going to put those at various points on this block. Um, I think this is going to be dead space. Uh, 5 sixteenths here. I'll probably do the half here. Um, for the quarter, I've got lots of quarter inch rod. So I'll probably just bend it around that. For the, the quarter inch. Come to think of it, I've got half inch rod too, so um, I'll do some tests with that and if when I come back you see this side's filed, that means the, the rod didn't work too well. Okay, a little bit about hand filing profiles. Um, I am by no means an expert on this. Uh, but I will share with you what I know and what I have found out from various people and from just trial and error. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm making a form block for bending some pieces for the key making project I'm doing. This side I already have a 5 sixteenths radius on this corner and I'm putting a 1 quarter radius on this corner. And what I'm using are radius gauges to check how I'm doing. Um, basically, I put it on the radius and you eyeball it and see where the contact is. And if you use a bigger one here, if you fill up the entire section with contact, then you're good. But you have to pay attention to where the contact is until you get there. Um, right now I have contact I have contact kind of in this area here on this curve so that means it's too small of a radius still I have to knock off that corner essentially so I get contact on the sides over here and typically, if you're not familiar with filing things to shape, what people tend to do is do this sort of action. And they'll follow the profile like this. And that is not what you want to do. You want to do the opposite of it. You want to start, and I'm going to take right off that corner here, and do the opposite curve like this and what that does when you have a curve here you have a tangent point wherever you're going to be you know in contact with it so you want to move the file in an arc so you have two tangent points meet and you can do a very fine job finessing curve into shape doing it that way and when you get close I mean right now go back to my big one I've got about it actually looks a lot like that only on the smaller gauge the difference between this and full contact is probably half a dozen good file swipes it really doesn't take much and if you get to the point where you have the opposite, you have contact on the corners uh, and no contact in the middle. If you really want that to match, now you're having to take off material from the faces and bring that back in so you can walk it back and forth and get it to match. So hopefully that will help with uh, any filing projects you have, uh, making keys, whatever you might do. Okay, a little bit more about filing. Um, first thing, if you're going to do a lot of filing, whether it's making keys, making molds, um, you know, cleaning up dent tools, whatever, uh, if you're going to do something by hand with a file, make sure you have 
dedicated files for the various materials you're going to use. This file here is exclusively for non-ferrous metals, particularly silver and brass. Um, this is probably a $35 file. This is one of the nice, uh, oh I forget the company. It's not Grobe, it's the less common one, uh, Velorb. They have a little fish icon on their, on their tangs. And this one's a number two, this is a barrette style file. Um, so it has nothing on the back or the sides, allows me to get into areas and not bang stuff up on the back side of the file uh, when I'm not paying attention. This file on the other hand that I've done most of the most of the work on this with is uh, you know get six files for ten bucks from Home Depot a piece of junk file and it's good for um, you know beating through stuff real fast but you know this is this is not a very good file um, and if I were to buff this up uh, you would see all sorts of tracks on it from high spots and low spots you know leaving uh, leaving racing stripes on there but what I want to show you here uh, I was cleaning this up a little bit with my nice file and right about here there's a ridge you know from doing this face and then doing the curve I got a facet in between um, might not be able to see it too well because of the the light reflection but um, this sharpie mark will pretty much replicate that line that facet in the metal and I can I can feel it when I run my finger over it um, so it is definitely there and I don't want it there um, for when I'm bending keys around this I don't want a, a notch in my key so again this is I'm not doing this action I'm doing the in uh, scooping action opposite of the curve to blend it in so I'm going to start with my contact point on this side of the ridge and as I scoop into it in a continuous motion I'm going to rock that center of gravity that contact point to the other side slightly of that line uh, and that will blend in that surface and the practice that you need to get is the amount of pressure that you apply and having a continuous action I'm a little bit rusty because I've been using this monster file so that's the length of stroke I've been, my, got my muscle memory into um, so this might be a little bit herky-jerky but we'll see how it goes um, but it doesn't take much to take off those little ridges and you just start a little bit uh, off the line and just scoop into the line and depending on what's comfortable for you you could start on this side of the line and rock it this way because I have a flat here that might be a good good way to start but it depends on what you're comfortable with uh, hand filing takes a lot of practice and I'm not anywhere near my 10,000 hours of practice to declare myself an authority on the subject but uh, if you have a dent ball with rust on it. You know, this is the sort of action you want to use on it. If you've got a ding on a head joint mandrel or something like that. And I, I am barely applying more than gravity the weight of uh, the weight of the file and almost the weight of my hands on this surface and it really doesn't take much and that blue spot is in a somehow I got a low spot there and that blue spot isn't going away there we go so there that ridge is all gone 
I feel another one down here that I'll take care of. I'll have to stand on my head to do that. But uh, that's basically the nuts and bolts of it. Um, make sure you have dedicated files for the material you're using. Don't use your files that you use on non-ferrous metals to shorten up or round off hinge screws or anything like that. Have dedicated files for that. Don't skimp on the quality. Uh, spend 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks on one file. Uh, if you take care of it, it will serve you well. Um, and that's about it.